What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. I've watched enough horror movies, I've read enough scary books and I have at least one brain cell. All these factors have made sure that I've never set foot in a forest at night or stayed in an isolated cabin in the middle of nowhere. I mean it's different if it's your own cabin that you own, that's all good, but if it's a random one you found, what is man's doing? And if you're still not convinced then here are the top 10 scary abandoned cabins. Starting us off with number 10 is The Chimney. This chilled me to my bone and also reminded me of Hannibal for some reason. Back in 2015, construction workers were demolishing an abandoned cabin in Woodland Park when they found skeletal remains inside the chimney. An odontologist identified the remains as belonging to Joshua Maddox. Joshua was 18 when he went on a walk on May 8th, 2008 and never came home. His parents knew he was an avid nature lover and went for hikes often, so nothing really seemed out of the blue. When he failed to come home that night, his parents reported him missing a few days later. Days became months, months became years. They didn't understand where he could have gone, I mean his IQ was very high, they knew it had to be something horrendous for him to go missing. The forest the cabin was in was searched extensively but not the cabin itself. The worst part was that it was only two blocks away from his house. They assumed Josh was trying to shimmy down the chimney to get into the cabin but then got stuck. His body was found with his knees above his head and his hand covering his face. He definitely didn't die from starvation, it was either dehydration which meant he died in a few days or hypothermia which also would have taken a day or two. Just imagine, like I'm sure he was yelling for help but no one could hear him. So claustrophobic I can't, I just can't even imagine it. At least his family got closure though and they finally found his body. Coming in at number 9 is the runaway family. Back in 2016 a Norwegian man was hiking in the woods when he came across an abandoned family cabin. And I say cabin but it was like a proper house cabin. Not just a one bedroom, one bathroom ting, it was it was luxury. Okay no but you know what I mean. Thankfully he had a camera with him so he actually went inside assuming it'd be empty but was eerily surprised. The cabin looked like it had been abandoned in a rush, everything seemed to be where it was supposed to be, it was basically fully furnished. The only fact people were able to find out about the cabin was that it was abandoned in 2005 so the cabin looked exactly as it did when it was left. So many personal belongings were left inside like wedding photos, clothes, etc. So it looked like the family planned to come back to the house, yet 11 years later, they hadn't. Dishes left in the sink, random toys, books, clothes everywhere. It looked like whatever they deemed the most important is what they grabbed. The cabin's rooms just looked like they were frozen in time and no one knows where this family is, why they left in such a hurry, and if they're even still alive. At number 8, we have the writing retreat. We all know writers sometimes go seclude themselves to get out of their writer's block, you know, maybe go to like a quiet airbnb in Italy or by the beach in Barbados, not a murder cabin in the middle of nowhere which is exactly what Tom Taylor decided to do. He booked himself at a remote cabin and recorded all the events that happened to him on his twitter account. Despite being windy outside all night, the wind chimes outside the cabin only started sounding at 5.30am exactly. He went outside to take them off but when he goes outside the door slams behind him. Slightly freaked out, he reaches the chimes and takes him off when he hears the chimes sound again and it clearly didn't come from the chimes in his hand now did it. Next as he's in bed he hears a footstep which he thought was a kangaroo and yes he was in Australia don't be alarmed but he saw a human shadow outside the window. If that's not bad enough a few minutes later his bedroom door flew open out of nowhere and when he closed it and tried to open it again the freaking doorknob just came off. Unable to sleep he was like okay let's just go right in the living room. He went to turn on the tv and it was just static. Honestly I hope to God he was writing a horror book because there's your book right there. Your experience. Right there, there you go. Filling our number 7 slot is The Hanging. This Nelson Brinker house was a cabin located near Steelville, Missouri. It was built by Judge Levi Snelson and was actually Crawford County's first ever courthouse. I don't know why they made a cabin a courthouse but fine. Years later, John Brinker owned the cabin and he lived with his two daughters and a slave called Mary who would take care of the girls. One day, two year old Vienna was found dead and Mary was accused of drowning her. After a very short trial, she was convicted for the murder, hung and buried near the cabin in an unmarked grave. The trial was so short and there was no evidence against her but since she was seen as lesser than everyone else as a slave, she was convicted. It said her spirit could never rest and it's still in the cabin today. Honestly, I'd also be pissed too if I got killed for something I didn't do. I'd also haunt the 
it out of that cabin as well. Now at number six is the dowry. I can barely even call White Otter Castle a cabin, even though it was. It was like the mansion equivalent of a cabin at three stories and was built by Jimmy McCuart. The castle even has a turret. Like which which cabin has a turret? The cabin can really only be accessed by boat, snowmobile, or plane, none of which are that convenient. Jimmy built the whole thing himself and it took him a grueling 12 years to do it. He cut all the logs himself, he hoisted all the beams, it really was a one man job. He wanted the home to be a dowry for his future bride which he hadn't even met yet, like he wasn't even engaged. But before his dream could come true, he drowned in a fishing accident in 1918 and his body was found tangled in fishing nets the following year. He was buried near the castle and many claim they've seen his ghost wander in and around the property. Honestly I would too, he spent 12 years building it only to die 3 years after finishing it. That's such a waste of time, I'd be so pissed, I'd invite all my ghost homies and be like listen, we're living and haunting here now. Coming in at number 5 is The Perfume. Located in Fort Worth, Texas, Log Cabin Village is actually a living history museum that includes 6 historic cabins, including the one in question, Foster Cabin. During the 1800s, the cabin was home to Harry Foster and his family and his wife died in the middle of the 1800s at some point, the actual date isn't recorded, and Harry scandalously married his nanny Jane Holt afterwards. It said Jane wore lilac perfume all the time and any tourists that visit the cabin now say they can sometimes smell lilacs in certain areas of the house and hear phantom footsteps all around. Honestly I'm glad it's just a smell in the cabin rather than a full on haunting. Like this cabin I could deal with, I, I could stay there. The other ones on the list not so much but I could do this one. At number 4 is Upstairs Entertainment. Now Shamrock House was part of a 3 cabin compound and it was built around 1925. Legend has it that a woman called Nancy and two of her friends were hired for the cabin to provide upstairs entertainment and I'll just leave it at that for our PG viewers. At the last minute Nancy got cold feet and changed her mind and decided to lock herself in the upstairs bathroom. Her father who was a preacher heard about the situation quickly after and made his way to Shamrock house as quickly as he possibly could. Nancy was absolutely terrified thinking about what her father would do to her when he got there even though really if anything I feel like he was probably just going to get her out of there and make sure she was safe but I mean I could be totally wrong and naive. He could be very pissed and like about to hurt her, I don't really know. But before he could reach, Nancy overdosed on opium and died in the bathroom. Anyone that stays there now has reported hearing hushed cries during the night, which is said to be from Nancy's ghost. Filling our number 3 slot is the Machete Man. Every city has its own local ghost stories and this one is from Raleigh, North Carolina. There's an abandoned cabin located at the Dead End Creek and it's apparently haunted by a ghost called the Machete Man. A skeleton was found in the fridge of the cabin and was said to be one of his victims. During the summer when kids would be out playing near the cabin, they would suddenly start feeling really cold and start hearing the rattling of chains and metal coming from the cabin. The sound was meant to be the machete blade in its scabbard and when people heard that sound, it meant he had left the cabin and was wandering down Ivy Lane. Say no more, I don't need to be anywhere near a machete wielding ghost, thank you very much. Now at number 2 is the Cabin of Sounds. Now this cabin is located in Dufferin County and despite it being a perfectly scenic location, none of the tenants have managed to stay there for long. It was first owned by a bone settler and then the Frame family who lived there till the 1890s and then it remained abandoned till its current owner bought it. The owner hired some woodcutters to stay in the cabin while they worked but after they'd moved in, things started going awry. One night they heard banging at the front door and they assumed more workers had arrived but before one of them could get to the door, the front door opened and closed by itself like some unseen person had just entered the cabin. After that, the men heard noises of people walking above them every single night. They started seeing entities outside the cabin, like weird lights outside the window, a fireball that used to surround the house and then rise above it. As the noises got worse, none of the residents were able to sleep. If they wanted a midnight snack, they'd see the dishes moving by themselves, chairs and beds would just get tossed around. It was havoc. These ghosts trashed the cabin so badly that even the ceiling came flaking off. Honestly, they should start paying rent if they're going to trash it that badly. The Frame family had heard these sort of complaints from every tenant they had and after an investigation, officers found human bones and amputations hidden in the attic, probably the work of the bone settler. Either way, it's safe to say the market value of that property has gone down the drain. And finally, at number 1 is Cabin 28. This one could be the next big Netflix docuseries so just listen up. Located in the Keddy Resort in Sierra Nevada, Sue Sharp and her 5 kids and their friends were staying at some of the cabins 
happens during April of 1981 for a nice holiday when the worst of the worst happened. On the morning of April 12th, Sue's daughter Sheila walked into cabin 28 to find the bodies of her mother, her brother John, and their friend Dana. They had all been bound with tape and wire, and all three had suffered blunt force trauma to their heads. Bloody knives and a hammer were found near the bodies as well. Three other kids were also staying in the cabin but remained unharmed, and Sue's other daughter Tina was nowhere to be found. She remained missing for three years until her skull and bones were found near Camp 18 near Feather Falls. The horrific quadruple homicide was never solved, and anyone that stayed in the cabin afterwards reported hearing moans and screams during the night, doors opening and closing, and weird light features that would appear and disappear out of nowhere. They say the victims haunt the cabin, which I totally agree with, but it was torn down in 2004, so I mean, I don't know if the ghosts now haunt the land the cabin used to be on, or if they've gone into the light, I don't really know. And that's it for today's video guys, camping, not me. Bugs all around me, definitely not me. Isolated cabins where I could potentially get possessed, murdered, or kidnapped, 150% not me. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below, and also let me know if you have any scary cabin stories of your own. As always, I'm your host Eamon Hassan, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!